Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Championships Podcast. Uh, I got Connor here. Connor, how you doing? <laughs> We're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, on this episode, we're going to be talking about Mac Jones, uh, Trey Lance, and Justin Fields. So what do you think about McCorkle, Connor? Well, McCorkle Jones is a, a pocket passer in the NFL, which means he's going to get another chance. Where? I'm not exactly sure. I'm thinking a team that's looking for someone that can drop back reliably. So ideally, I am thinking of teams that have things in place, like the Falcons, the Vikings, the Niners, maybe, is a backup, to kind of like the Sam Darnold treatment. Oh, um, backup. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Where else... Could he go? Maybe even a place like the Raiders, because they still have some of the old Patriots uh, office, like, you know, like GM scouting team in their building. Um, so maybe there's a little bit of a connection there, and they don't really have a quarterback solution. I'm kind of thinking it could be anyone between, like, pick 10 to the end of the first who may not get the quarterback they wanted, and then you give a flyer, a late-round, mid-round pick on someone like, you know, Mac Jones who's proven he could play at one point in his rookie season. He wasn't bad. Not anything special, but he was a capable starter. And then you put him in, see what happens, get him in your system, get him in your building, and hope for the best. Now, does that mean he's going to be a good fantasy quarterback? I wouldn't say that great because his ceiling is extremely capped as a even arm-talented limited pocket passer. Um, I'm going to be honest. I think he sucks. He's terrible. Why? Um, <laughs> so he turns the ball over a, a lot. Not like an extreme amount, but like enough where it makes me not like him. He's not athletic at all. Like he's a, he just cries about every, every call. He, like you always see him crying to the refs. Like, oh, what? where's the flag? Where's the flag? Have you ever quit a job? Yeah. Huh? Have you ever quit a job? Do you ever complain about your job? Not this one. Previous jobs. Okay. So this is going to be his previous job. And uh, why did you used to complain with your old boss? Remember. But so. Uh, but no, answer I the question. Hear... I'm telling you, no. his boss sucks. His coach sucks. Your boss sucked. He is rightfully bitching about the Patriots. They have no weapons, nothing on the team. He's playing with a bunch of JV players in the NFL. His best pass catcher is Hunter Henry. He was on his third knee. Okay, but guys with, like Tom Brady have figured it out with the shit talent. Tom Brady had capable players. He had the greatest tight end ever. He had Randy Moss, Wes Welker, Edelman. I could keep going. Tim Brown. He had everything. Okay, that was probably Deion Branch. Tom Brady. A crazy offensive line. Out, the best fucking... defense there was. He had a stacked team. Okay. McCorkle okay, is playing anyways, literally with third string about... players on every other team. Okay, but I'm talking about for fantasy because zero trust in him as my QB two. If 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 I if I if my QB two was injured and I had Mac Jones and I could put him in as my QB two, I wouldn't do it. I would find some other skilled player, put him in there. I I just don't trust him. Okay, let's just play a game. Okay, uh, Aiden O'Connell or Mac Jones. All right, who is who is Mac who is Mac Jones? What team is he going to be on? What okay, well, like what do I think? Like okay, but so you're saying who, who would you rather have? Uh, Mac Jones or or whoever? But first, we got to know what team Mac Jones is on, so I can be like, okay, well, if he's on that team, he's going to suck. If he's on this team, he might not be that bad. All right, I think he is going to join a team of a McVay disciple. I think they're going to want him to be a backup quarterback at minimum. I think he goes to the Rams, the Vikings. I said the Raiders, even though it's more Patriots related. Um, I could see him even in, what about like being Tua's backup? He's going to be a backup. I'd rather have someone who's going to start. Okay. Well, I'm just saying he has the opportunity to start in some of these situations. There's only 32 starting quarterbacks. We have... Six starting quarterbacks, hypothetically, right now, according to the professional analysts in the draft. 
So okay. you're telling me there's already 26 quarterbacks that are going to be locked in starters. So like Mac Jones is going to end up being an overflow. And there was like 40 quarterbacks that got that's played this year. I think were 45 or something like that because a bunch of starters got banged up. Okay. Jacoby Brissett was a good starter for like four weeks. What team's he on? I don't know what team he's on. He's a free agent, isn't he? Okay. So where's he, he going? He was, on, or, no, no, I, I, I would have Mac Jones over Brissett. That's, that's the point I'm making. So let's do this game. All right. I'm going to name some people off. You tell me what you think. Okay. okay. So we'll start. Aiden O'Connell or Mac Jones? On, we'll say he's on the Vikings. Competing for the starting job. That's his position after the draft. Okay. Um, and what's what's uh, O'Connell's deal? Is he competing? Um, yeah, he's competing again for the job against Garoppolo only. Uh, I think I'd take my chance with O'Connell. He had a he had a pretty decent year last year. All right, that's totally wrong. I'm taking Mac Jones. I think he's better, more talented. Nah. He has a higher draft pick, and he has way better players around him. That, that's okay. Just because you're a higher draft pick doesn't mean shit. I'm just saying. It's Sam he's Donald. He's the first overall he's, pick, and now he got Everything O'Connell does, Mac Jones does better. Back. Onward. Onward. All right. Uh, Minshew or Mac Jones? Oh, Minshew all day. I would argue in their situations, if they're both backups, they probably have Minshew. If Mac is starting, I'm taking Mac. Next. Well, I mean, that's kind of obvious, but either way. Garoppolo or Mac Jones? Well, consider Garoppolo is probably not going to start ever or be a starter ever again. I'll go Mac Jones on that. Okay. Desmond Ritter or Mac Jones? Mac Jones. Okay. So I went down the list of Fantasy Pros Dynasty because I'm going to go up the list a little bit now. Kenny Pickett or Mac Jones? Uh, well, he might lose his job too, Pickett. To Mac Jones. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, R- Russell Wilson. I saw he he's got an interview Perfect. or he's visiting. Visiting. All right. Answer the question, Pickett or Jones, real quick. And for me, they're even. Okay. All right. So Russell comes in and takes the Pittsburgh job. Mac Jones possibly starting or Russell Wilson possibly starting against Pickett. You're saying I'd, wh- whether or not I'd want uh, Yeah, Mac Wilson, Jones Wilson? Wilson on the Steelers competing against Pickett or Pickett, sorry. Pickett and Wilson on the Steelers competing against each other or Mac Jones and... I don't know, Jacoby Brissett competing on a team. Wilson. Wilson. Okay. Um, Sam Howell or Mac Jones? Sam Howell. Okay, I agree with that. And then the last one I think is arguable in this range would be like Daniel Jones or Mac Jones. Daniel Jones, but only because of his rushing ability. Right. Do you think Jones is replaced? I think they bring somebody in to compete with him instead of not having anybody to compete with him. I'm starting to get a feeling they're going to end up drafting a quarterback because how often are you where they are in the draft? So I think I he gets that, uh, entirely. I saw that they also uh, had a quick little interview with Russell Wilson. Yeah, it sounds like a like disaster. Or something. Russell Wilson is a game manager. If you're going to do that, just keep Tyrod. Uh, I feel like he's always had bad luck, Tyrod. He's, he got beat out by uh, Nate, Nate uh, the guy for the Bills, uh, Nate Ben, right? He got mm-hmm. beat out by him, who then threw like five interceptions. Then got beat out by Mayfield because of an injury. Then he got a a uh, needle stuck in his lung, and then yeah, Herbert beat him out. Like he, yep. he can't catch a break. <laughs> Herbert paid someone off for that to happen. Um, all right. So the point is, I think if you're going to take a flyer on a quarterback on your team, I would take one of Mac Jones as like a QB four. It's just 
that floating quarterback. I think he has more skills and potential to find his way into a starting job for a year or two than all these guys in this range for the most part. Now, if you're going to compare him to the rookies, I think any rookie in this draft who gets drafted in the first round or second round, I would put over Mac. But all these bums that we know are going to lose their jobs, like Pickett, Wilson, Jones, um, uh, Derek Carr should lose his job, but he's guaranteed a contract, so he's not in this conversation. Um, And then, like, these other perpetual backups, Minshew, Garoppolo, Ritter, Tannehill, all these guys, I'm taking Mac above all of them because he at least he seems to have the opportunity to get a second chance, and I've seen him play better than – I've seen Mac Jones play better than Kenny Pickett has ever played. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I can I can be with him being a, a QB4, but for me, not anything higher. Yes, I agree with that, but – I mean, I I saw a thing that said uh, before the 2023 season, there was a an arm talent rankings from the ringer. Put him last in last place behind Josh Dobbs. And Josh Dobbs had a 71 and then Mac had a 70. Like if you if you're being put in last place with your arm talent, like that's just. (laughs) <laughs> that's just saying it all for me. I don't agree with that. I don't know who's ahead of him, but I'm assuming that means Pickett was put ahead of him, and I, I think that it was, it was, it was Jeff, Jeff, Josh Dobbs was the next guy ahead of him with a 71. I'm, I'm saying I bet Pickett then is ahead of Dobbs. Yeah. Unless there's backups that are rating higher than that. I don't know, man. I, I think Mac has the opportunity to have a second chance. Excuse me. But that's about it. I think I think he does for, like, being a quarterback in the NFL, but as far as for quarterback for fantasy, like he's I've he's lost all trust for me. Okay, fair enough. All right, who we got next? Uh, Trey Lance. Do you think he gets right. a second chance somewhere, or do you think he'll just always be a backup? I hear a lot of rumors that teams want to trade for him. I think he's super talented, but the thing comes it comes down to me for him. He's what is he, 25 at this point-ish? He's played, mm, like, maybe the equivalent of two seasons since he was, like, a freshman in college. And he had a broken leg, which can alter a career to an extent because we haven't seen him on a field as the mobile quarterback you knew him as before since his injury. So, mm-hmm. and... He didn't have any touch on his passes. His mechanics were all messed up and, like, wonky. You have to run a specific offense to accommodate his current skill set. Like, he's, like, um, to me, like a watered-down version of Kaepernick in the modern NFL. Um, I don't know if I see him starting again. Now, if he had the opportunity to start, I would take him with the upside because of the rushing ability, like you said before, about some other quarterbacks over Mac Jones, if I'm literally guaranteed 17 games for both guys in a equivalent-ish situation, then you have more upside with Trey Lance. Nice, yeah. I'm not saying he's anywhere. I don't think he's as good of a quarterback at all. I don't think he can read a defense. I don't think he can do anything. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. He, I just think he lacks experience, like you said. I mean, I think they said he um, in college that he was he played in 19 games. He only started 17, only threw 318 passes. I mean, that's not a lot for a college career. Um, then, like like you were saying, his mechanics were all thrown off, and I think I saw it was because he broke like a finger or something, and he had to redo his throwing his throwing mechanics, and that made him less accurate. Um, and then also, like you said, struggles to read a defense. And when he was games that he was in with with uh, uh, what's his name, I, uh, Kyle Kyle Shanahan, I I just feel like he just wanted to run him all over. I almost feel like it was because he didn't trust him as a passer. Yeah, he didn't, he I didn't mean, trust him to make the correct calls. I mean, if you can't. You can't trust your quarterback or to to make the correct throws. Sorry, to make the correct throws because he's not able to read the defense or 
the problem was. But I mean, if your your own coach can't can't put his trust in you, like that's not. I mean, you're saying that perfectly, and even to sum that up even better, Shanahan had more success and trusted Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard longer and more often than he did with Lance. And then you ship Lance off for pennies on the dollar. And it seems like he, he trusted Purdy, the last pick in the draft, Mr. Irrelevant, he trusted him sooner like than you anyone would have thought. And... It's probably because, he, like, he was good mechanics. He's got good, uh, makes good good choices with like where to throw the ball and stuff. So that it's that I, to me that's just showing that he's not out there with with any like quarterback. Like, oh, I don't, I can't trust me. I can't trust me. Like, he, it's it's seriously like your talent and your the, all the choices that you make on the field, like. So that just shows that Trey Lance wasn't really good at that for me. Right. And the other thing, too, is I think there's a little bit of an ego with Shanahan. So, like, he wants you to play in his structure the way he wants. And the way Lance plays, I don't know if that was his pick. There's always been rumors that he wanted Mac Jones. That's why I also said, like, he could go to another, like, McVay-ish team or, like, Shanahan's kind of offense. He would fit something like that perfectly to be, like, the backup, a possible starter in the long term. Because I would say, again, he is similar to Purdy, but he he has more natural arm talent than Purdy, for sure. If you can just play in the system, read the defense, and do what he wants, like he will play you, and he will reward you for that. You know, He thinks in his head that he doesn't need an elite quarterback. He needs a solid starter, someone that makes the right decision, and you know, to he can put them over the top. He thinks he, he's the difference maker, not the guy about under center. I feel, I feel like he... He played um, under his under his play style. If he didn't have like any of those injuries that screwed up all of his mechanics, because I mean the one year they the one good year that he did play in college, like he broke all those all those records for what was it like yards and and I think like the most yards or something and also touchdowns or something. I don't know exactly what it was, but have a good year and then. Like we've been saying, he just his mechanics got thrown off. So maybe if some of that didn't happen, then maybe he would have been able to run the offense that Shanahan wanted, but wasn't able to do that. <laughs> I mean, there's and historically there's been a lot of good quarterbacks that came out of smaller schools, like uh, Roethlisberger. I think played in the MAC. He played at Miami of Ohio. Um, I think Wentz, Wentz was pretty good, a former MVP. Wentz. He came from the same uh, school Josh, as Lance, which was North Josh Dakota. Allen, right? He was. Uh, yep, Wyoming. Wyoming. Yep. So some of these guys can adapt, but there's a chance too. Like you're saying, he broke all these records. I mean, he was playing against you know cashiers uh, in the FCS. <laughs> so if you're a better athlete than them, you can make up that difference relatively easily. I would say, especially when you had a uh, some. Other freak athletes on the team. I'm pretty sure he played with Christian Watson, who you know may or may not have been the difference maker. He was later in his career there, but that's still yeah. comparing players. You know, he, he sticks out. It's like the big kid in fourth grade. You know. Yeah. All right, and then we're on to Justin Fields. I'll let you start with this one. What do you think about Fields? All right, so I think I think he definitely has a chance to 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 go somewhere and start again. Um, kind of hope it's with Atlanta. Um, but the past couple of days, I've been hearing uh, Kirk is going to possibly go to Atlanta, Kirk Cousins. So it might not happen with Fields, um, even though I think Fields is he's from Atlanta, right? Yeah, he's from Georgia somewhere, yeah. Or somewhere in Georgia. But, but, I mean, that would be great for him. He'd go back to his hometown and stuff like that but i'm and i feel like they have the offensive style that that or it's their offensive style because of the, his running ability and he i feel like he has the the talent with his arm he just needs to clean up some things be put in a good situation with good talent unlike how he was in chicago that was just a mess over there i mean I don't think anyone could have been successful in that, in that, that 
piece over there. <laughs> yeah. So my thing with Fields is a lot of these quarterbacks in the draft teams have seen from film. They saw some at the combine. They're going to see some coming up in their pro day. So when do you think Fields gets traded? Because I feel like if he was a desirable target, teams would be more proactive than they are right now. And I don't, there's a lot of chatter that the market they we originally thought he had, that it isn't there. And I think that's just because he hasn't made many steps as a passer in the league. He's been, when he's been at his best, he's running a lot. He's injury prone. He gets banged up a lot. He takes a lot of hits. Some of that could be attributed to the Bears line the last couple of years. You know, that was a little bit better last year, but before that he was nicked up a lot. So do I think he deserves another chance? Yes. I just don't know where I'm going to place him. I could see him similar to Jones. He gets put in a place where he's competing with a, you know, mid to below average starter in the league and he may get the the nod because he has more potential from a talent perspective even though you know he's got a long way to go but i mean i guess um because that because i think i heard that he that, that that the gm for chicago he said oh it, it wouldn't be right if i didn't trade him before free agency well free agency happened what was it today or yesterday uh this is the legal tampering period free agency starts next week on i think tuesday oh next week okay so they still got they still got a couple days before so let, me, let me throw something at you uh dable and the giants i got daniel jones a mobile quarterback with you know he's above average athlete got decent arm talent um Runs a system. He isn't. He isn't. Hasn't developed and lived up to what they had hoped he'd be when he was a first round pick. You know, six, seven years ago now. Um, what if they brought in Fields to compete with Jones? You have these two like project quarterbacks, and they can see like Dable's supposed to be a quarterback whisperer. So like, can you fix him, or do you just go the draft route and take a undamaged product and try to mold your guy from from new with a full rookie contract? Well, okay, so say say they get say they get Fields, say he beats up Jones. What do you do with his contract? Well, they contract. can't get rid of him anyway. So I mean, he's not the quarterback of the future, but they're stuck with him for the next year. His contract's like guaranteed. So if they cut him, it's Even like forty. They, million. Well, could they trade Jones, or are they still Who the be fuck on wants the hook? Him? Why would you want him? He sucks. You just you just told me he's not worth his money. Why would I trade for him? Well, yeah, but I I don't think he's worth his money. But maybe some other stupid like what what if they just do a swap? Jo- or Chicago and and the Giants they just swap they're getting, quarterback. They're Caleb Williams, man. There, there's no <laughs> team in the league that would pay Daniel Jones forty million dollars. The Giants weren't supposed to do it when they yeah. did, and everyone was, was shocked. Yeah. So it, nah, that doesn't screwed. make any. I, no one's gonna. They're they're stuck with them. They're gonna eat it. They're in the middle of a rebuild. They don't have enough talent anyway to be a uh, a big you know. Um, factor you know threat in the nfc so you lose saquon probably in free agency you're going to rebuild at the quarterback position you have pretty much no receivers that are worthwhile mentioning and darren waller wants to maybe retire so where do you start with nothing you have nothing and that's why i'm curious i I, I wouldn't even go after field just reason of if you're trying to do a rebuild if he starts actually winning games for you, Fields, because he's a better quarterback than Jones, like worth it if you if you're trying to rebuild. Okay, well, that was just an idea I had because I don't know. I thought maybe that you know they use their first two picks in the draft to get some elite players at the skill positions or in the line or something like that. And then they throw uh, something at Fields for the year, see how he pans out, plays against Jones. They can compete against each other. Maybe both play during the season. The Giants lose a bunch of games, and again, they're towards the top of the draft. They can make a decision next year where they're both off their books. That was kind of my idea. What do you think, do you think Fields thinks of himself? Do you think he would want to bet on himself, be like, no, I'm better than having to compete with somebody for a starting job? Do you think he thinks he just deserves to start somewhere else? Confidence is a quarterback. If you have confidence, you're not going to play well. So I hope he still has belief in himself as a starter. I just don't well, know no, where he's really this. I guess I'm saying, do you think he's he has the mindset of like, of okay, well, if I have to compete over there, I'm not even gonna 
go there because I just I'm just gonna start. I think he'll, he'll go over like okay, no, yeah, no. I'll, I'll compete with you, but I know I'm gonna beat you out. I I doubt that at this point. I mean, his own team. I mean, it's not the same front office, but his own team doesn't want him right now. He has no seems like no market value to any of these other teams. Let me uh, give you one more idea, though. What uh, about him being the backup to Anthony Richardson? Or what about... Uh, do they still have... Uh, who's, who's the backup for Lamar? Huntley? Do they still have Huntley? I think Huntley is a restricted free agent. I could be wrong. That, that would be a good... A good... Uh, backup position for him to learn from Lamar a little bit, maybe for a year or two, and then... Yeah. And then... I think the thing spot. with Huntley is, though, the Ravens like him, and Lamar likes him a lot, because they're childhood friends. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they used to... They're from the same town, same school, or something like that. Hmm. Um, try to look down the list here. Yeah, I think that, that would probably, probably help him if he... Uh, if he went to who? Who did you say? This team, Indy. Oh yeah, well, that would help him because he's actually y- y- younger than or older. He's older than Richardson, so I don't know if that would. Yeah, I don't know. I'm saying I don't know. He might realize his market is no one wants him to start right now, and he just ends up going to the best situation where he could get an opportunity if someone gets you know nicked up, and he's got talent around him. I'd rather. I think I'd rather go play as a backup and get in and get in a, a organization that is good rather than go play for some bottom feeder and try to start for yeah. a year and then get thrown thrown away and recycle. Because yeah, if you go out one more problem. year and play poorly on a bad team, you have no value to the league. Like you're immediately yeah. not going to have another chance. You could be I mean, I mean, yeah. a backup. I was, I was, I was just going to say, look at what happened to Mitch Mitch Trubisky. He exact same team the bears they were a debacle he gets thrown the the bills pick him up as their backup pretty decent as the backup he got a second chance as a starter pittsburgh completely shit the bed and now he's back with the Bills as a backup and never going to be a starter again absolutely uh and even what about a team like oh uh, i'm trying to think i'm going on the list what about the Rams? What if the Rams are like, yeah, we can work with this guy somehow. We can teach him. I know he's not really the literal quarterback that Stafford is. He's not the same play style, but maybe McVay's intrigued by someone with his skill set. What about Seattle? Like, there's a lot of these quarterbacks are at the end of their career or the end of their tenure. Where I'm looking, you know, Smith, Stafford, Jones, even Levis. If Levis is bad this year, he's done probably. Wilson's a free agent. Um, Carr is locked up, but like I don't think it's someone they really wanted. They put themselves in a situation where they couldn't get rid of him. Um, Rogers probably has a year or two left. So. New England. I know, I know that New England is linked to um, LSU. Uh, Jaden uh, Daniels. What's his name? Yeah, and so they they got a similar play style. So maybe maybe the Patriots are looking for a, a quarterback with that play style where they. Like to run the ball out, maybe maybe he could be a fit in New England if they don't get Jaden Daniels, or if they don't want him. I don't know. Possible. I think the Patriots would be better right now, uh, trading out honestly, and uh, with a team like the Giants, actually. Who do you think their quarterback would be if they traded out? Doesn't matter. They have no pieces in place to worry about. <laughs> they they have to put somebody there. <laughs> they got Lord Zappy. Bailey Zappy. Yeah. <laughs> They can pick up Russ. Just, they can pick up a guy who wants to check. Put Joe Flacco back there. Mac Jones. He got beat out by Bailey Zappi. He didn't get beat out. Yeah, he did in the middle of the season. And they both played terrible. You're acting like there was an increase in performance. No one could succeed. It doesn't matter. You could have put you could have put like Allen on that team, and he probably throws for 30 picks instead of 15. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Who was their Who was their number one receiver? Don't say Kendrick Bourne. Besides that, after he hurt his knee, um, Henry Hunter Henry. He hurt his knee too. But he was probably their next their next receiver. Sure, it was Douglas. 
only receiver they had left. They have nobody. They have practice squad players for the whole roster. Yeah, basically. So how do, how does something like that happen? You 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 lose Tom Brady. Do you think that that you'd be able to gain more pieces by not having? I mean, you didn't have a huge contract, but like it was enough where you could have gained a couple more pieces. Like, how do they go from at the very top to literally the very bottom? The year they had, the year they drafted Jones and they had all that cap space, they signed a bunch of average players overpaid for him. So the born. That was Henry, Johnny Smith, because they both got both those tight ends. It was a big deal. They went after some defensive players. So I remember them getting a defensive tackle. I can't off the top of my head. And then they retained, like, Chung, I think, at the time. So they spent – they had a bunch of cap space, and they blew it all up on these mid-level players but paid them at a premium. Yeah. They also oh. um, overpaid for uh, – what was his name? Uh, the speedy receiver he played on Baltimore this year. What is his name? Uh, I don't know. He's from USC. I remember getting drafted a few years ago. Uh, Aguilar. They paid Aguilar like eighteen million oh. a year. Yeah, yeah, Aguilar. Yeah, it, it just they got all these bums and they overpaid for them because Bill's like, oh, they'll fit my scheme, and then they literally don't play. And then you're stuck with them because, again, they loaded these contracts up. They were three-year deals with a lot of guarantees, and they put out this C-level team. And it's like my scheme will outwork your whole talent, and it just didn't work, and that's why he doesn't have a job. So I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with all these guys. I, I I think with the perceived value and talent of this quarterback class, a lot of them are going to find themselves on a bench somewhere, but with the last couple of years with all these quarterback injuries, I, I think they all have a chance to play a couple of games this year, maybe to an extent. Um, and I hope they do. Cause I mean, there's some need in the league for quarterback talent. Some of these guys have talent, but they never put it together. So I just want to get a definitive yes or no. Can you put it together? Well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yep. So, um, all right. That's uh, that's the uh, episode for Championships Podcast. Uh, like and subscribe. Connor, you got any last final words or are you good? Uh, it was nice talking to you about this. Um, next episode, I think we're going to go over some of the rookie wide receiver landing spots and discuss that and uh, see where we like people going to. All right. Cool, cool. And uh, Mac Jones sucks. <laughs> He does. All right, everyone. uh, Thank you for watching. Please uh, follow us and uh, like, comment the video.